nicely set up at uh, Victory Show. The two tents are up. Um, we've got a bit of a kit explosion going on at the front here, but it'll be organised in time. Kettle's on, most importantly. Um, David's foraging for wood for a fire. Fire pit is dug, but not set up. I will live on this properly. It's just about boiling now. So, uh, yeah, everything's going very nicely. Um, and here, here we are. Marvellous. The Cosby Machete Fiend. Cosby? Yeah, yeah, that's where we are. Yeah, it's all scratchy. Right. So, I shall go and assist in uh, continuing to set up. The flat of the uh, yeah. machete. Just job there. Right. And I go. Well, yeah, that's a serious one. You're going to do it. Do it right. Do it once. <laughs> right, I'll come and start doing some shoveling. We've got an excellent fire, fire on the go. Here's Mr. Pryor. We've improved our herd in the ground, which David is currently camouflaging the uh, frontage of. I'm not sure if you're going to be able to see that in the darkness, but we'll see. That's quite convincing, Marlon. <laughs> you got your striped coach? Yeah. Yes! <laughs> so, uh, no, we've got some more shots of this. I'm not sure that's ideal for. Uh, Public. Well, I'm not sure it's <laughs> ideal from the point of view of shooting at people, David. True. <laughs> but there we go, never mind. We hopefully won't be doing too much of that. Oh. Here we are. First morning. Everything set up. Breakfast on the go. Fire on the go. Our basher over there. Over the hole. And he's good. David's in high spirits. <laughs> oh, did the wind change? <coughs> Just a bit. Oh dear. So uh, we'll do a show report in a little bit, go for a wander around, see before the public come in and see uh, what other displays there are. Once we've had some breakfast. So we'll do a quick walk round of the display. Now we're, uh, we've got daylight. Got our oil in the ground, the riffles etc. And we've got a little kit layout there. Um, all the Indian made webbing, K rations, etc. Mm. A hole from the front. So it's all gone rather well. We deepened it, deepened it a bit, built the uh, built the uh, the parapet up at the front. So uh, and let's say a better shot from our resident artist having done the nice 14th army formation sign there so we're on our little old David got uh, rifles there Indian webbing uh, which you've already seen video on uh, small pack and so on slouch hat up there um, and uh, yeah quite comfy down in here having a good time despite the rain so, uh, it's only just started raining. It's only just started raining, yeah. <laughs> true, true that, true that. And there we go. So the end of day one, and I think it's fair to say it's been a bit of a challenge. Uh, it's been absolutely soaking wet. Um, we've got a good fire going though. Uh, so that's good, that's something. Um, we've had a lot of interested people around, which has been good. Um, David's chopping more wood, as, he is, wood. as he's wont to do. Uh, one of his favourite pastimes. Um, so yeah, um, a couple of pickups to talk about uh, in a video, uh, another video. Um, our attempts to line the uh, the hole with straw have been to no avail. It's now 
rather wet anyway, but never mind. Um, the track is absolutely horrendous. Um, the people have been walking through. So, there we go, that's how it is. Uh, make the best of it. Tomorrow's supposed to be better, so hopefully, um, hopefully it'll be uh, somewhat better. I'm probably going to go for a wander around in a short while and have a look at some of the other displays go and for get a some videos. Thank you, David. Uh, <laughs> I should have expected this bringing a camera to an event. Anyway, we'll go and have a wander around and uh, see what's going out on the main field. So off we go. We'll go for a we'll go for a wander. I think as it's wet, some people have already decided to pack up and leave. Unfortunately, um, there we go. We've got the Germans here doing. Uh, I think winter 44. The, uh, the main field, the Yanks, as you can see mud, 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 mud. Quite a lot of dejected looking people, but there we go. That's how it is. Bits and pieces here on the main field. Just have a wander around, a quick wander around, have a look. The Germans in the corner here, getting crowd and things. Carrier and things, and the ambulance. Um, Monty, as uh, is obligatory. Britain's here, British corner. You see a lot of stuff sheeted up now because the weather's been so bad this day. The Russians in the corner here as well. Sorry if the wind's affecting the microphone, it might do. Here. Jeeps a go go. One of the suspects. There we go. <laughs> Medium machine gun lads up on the corner there. Yeah. There, Dingo. T34 85 here. That's in display. Quite a big Russian contingent this one here. Again, sorry if the microphone's being affected by the wind. Here, and we've got the, uh, the Shermans uh, and a Stuart, some of which are painted up Sherwood Rangers, which is nice to see. Nice to see some British armour for a change. Um, so we've got the three Shermans and Stuart, uh, which is nice. You can see here, done the Sherwood Rangers. And you can see the front there. I believe these are some of the tanks that were on the 30 Corps trip uh, last year. And so, yeah, I'm not going to go much further around. It's much, much, much really more American vehicles and things. Um, so, yeah, just had a bit of a wander around. Um, head back to camp now and go and get dinner on the go. Curry tonight. So, yep. Hi, guys. So, first time uh, using a new camera uh, and first time filming at an event. So, forgive the um, microphone noise and the lighting and so on. Uh, I will improve and also not... The, the rain rather took the wind out of my sails. Uh, I shouldn't complain really because we were reenacting Burma. Um, and I mean, for God's sake, anything over here is nothing like the monsoon over there. How the soldiers coped, I will never know. But um, yeah, the rain on the first day took uh, dampened spirits somewhat, uh, and so I didn't do any filming on the second day. Just had a brief wander around, as you saw in the uh, in the footage there. Uh, hopefully, the next event where I film will be. Uh, will be better. Um, possibly going to take the camera to Wimpole uh, uh, later on this month uh, where we'll be doing a BEF display uh, post Dunkirk, well BEF returned uh, and in training uh, in late 1940. So um, hopefully I'll take it there, uh, take a tripod along and uh, do some filming of the training and things we're doing. Um, but anyway, so I thought I'd do a quick run through the bits and pieces I picked up uh, this past weekend. And uh, yeah, we'll start off with this. Um, I've been after for a while. I had a 1930, well, the, the helmet I was wearing, um, a big show, was a 1939 dated shell, um, which I, I bought. Unfortunately, it had the, the early early liner in which broke. 
So this is a replacement essentially for it. It's untouched. It's got the original paintwork on, all the remnants of the original paint. It's not in bad condition. Uh, the early type screw and everything. The helmet itself. I'm not sure if it'll be able to focus in on this. You can see on there, 1938 on the. It's 1938 on the uh, shell, and it's 1938 on the liner, which I won't be able to photograph. Original chin strap, um, get the light in here. The original liner with the large head pad in there. It's a size 7, uh, it's not for wearing anyway, it's for it's to go in the collection uh, as an untouched um, early war Mark II helmet. Um, and it's, it's not in bad condition at all with the original sort of brown, green-brown paint on there. Um, and that was £40, which is fine these days that's not a bad price for them at all the second item I picked up is a, a steel uh, button stick for uh, two pounds I think it was um, the helmet at this and the next item all came from a chap who came around the display I forget his name which is terrible but uh, two pound I haven't got a steel one yet so I wanted one of those for collections next item was a is a boot brush 1941 dated uh, ADMY so it's an Admiralty one it's a Navy one which is why I bought it five pounds which isn't bad the uh, stamping and everything's very nice there, and fairly early date, so that's good. Not in bad condition at all. A little, picked up a little bit of undergrowth from the weekend, apparently. And you can see the number uh, inside. This is another uh, pickup. was a, a 1937 pattern economy uh, belt, uh, but it's an RAF one, which is slightly unusual. Um, 1944, dated by uh, Bagcraft. And you can see here it's got the, the webbing loops as opposed to the brass uh, slide keepers. Brass buckles, but uh, the uh, C-clips for adjusting inside are... I've called this bonderized in the past. I believe the, the bonderized finish is actually black. The blackened finish you see on post-war webbing. These are sheridized, uh, if I remember correctly, sheridized steel. And the same on the back here. Oops. The back buckles are both uh, sheridized steel, which uh, sort of blend in with the blue-grey of the belt. So that is going to be the start of possibly uh, an economy RAF webbing set because you do sometimes see uh, wartime dated quick release RAF pouches as well so I might uh, get a pair of those but certainly put together an RAF uh, webbing set so that's the the show review as I say again hopefully in the future it'll be a bit uh, a bit better it's first time doing it first time using this camera and getting used to it and so on so yes I hope you've enjoyed that and I say until next time uh, bye for now